if I mention a name that's from the Bible, many things will pop into your mind. And if I say the word David, um, you might think of David and Goliath, you know, mm. how God used him to take out Goliath, you know, with just a slingshot. And then you think of David, that how he was anointed to be king to take over Saul. Oh, now we see all these things, and we one thing, one of the things that we hear about David a lot, he was a man after his own heart. He was after God's own heart, Lord. and we hear this all all along. But sometimes we forget that he was human, uh, and there was yeah. some things that happened in his life. Uh, one of it I call it is the Bathsheba syndrome, where he was in a place that he had lust in his flesh, that, you know, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so we see that that he was supposed to have gone off to battle, but while he was up in his upper courtyard, he saw Bathsheba, and he just lusted after her. And he just fell in love with her so much. But she was already married. She was already married. So he used this thing as king to be able to send his, her husband off to battle where he knew that he wouldn't come back. Mm -hmm. And so, so he get killed and he ends up having the baby with, with Bathsheba and marries her and so forth. But one of the things that we have to understand that, that he, when the baby came, the baby died. Even though he believed in God Almighty, God used him so much that sometimes we get into the place that sometimes we just sin. And this is the thing that we have to understand that in Psalms 51, he wrote Psalms 51 very differently where he was broken hearted because of his sin that he had did. He was very broken hearted. I'm going to kind of skip around in this to get the essence of that. What sin can do to your life and if it doesn't break your heart when you do it, you need to check your relationship with God. And so he was very broken hearted when he did this. And Psalms 51 7 says, Psalms 51 7 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So God understand what it means to be broken hearted because of sin. He understands that we need that, you know. People go around and they sin and sin and sin. It does not have an effect on them. But when we get to the point that we love Jesus, love God with all of our hearts, mind, and soul, that we feel totally uncomfortable because the sins that we have in our life. Now, we have to understand this, that sin can cause a great pain and distress in us. Great pain and distress that sometimes it might not even be sin, but we can be broken hearted because of external calamities that happen in our life. Things that happen, the death of a loved one, or financial problems, or things we can be broken hearted. But we have to understand that it, we have to trust God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul. Now, we're going to look at what sin can do to make you broken hearted. Even though that if you feel broken hearted in so many areas, you need to look and see, is there sin in my life I need to confess? Or is there sin that I have not forgiven myself of? That God, I've already confessed it, and God forgave me, but did I forgive myself of them? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that the brokenheartedness is sin. Sin wants to keep revisiting you, Not and they keep wanting to say, you did this, this. But if you confessed your sins to God, they are gone. 
There, you are made whiter than snow. You are already here. You are cleansed. So don't let Satan or anybody else, and when I say anybody else, don't let Satan use anybody else to condemn you for your past sins. Nah. And so that's the thing. That's where a lot of, you see a lot of Christians are so down because they have not forgiven themselves. They know they confess to God and make Jesus as their Savior. And they know this for certain, but they have never forgiven themselves. No. So we have to understand that, that there are still people, there are Christians, but they, they hang on to one part of their life, one part of the life that they do not want to give up. And they continually to sin in that one area. And so they, you know, they get so involved in the circumstances of life that sometimes they feel like there's no way out. Nah. But there is the only way out is going to Jesus Lord. and asking Jesus. Yeah. He is our hope and he's our confidence. Yeah. And we need to go to him in all things. Yes. Not in just anything, little thing, but in all things. No matter what circumstances we get through, we need to go to him. You know, that sometimes pain, we go through pain and we feel broken hearted because sometimes it's just because of our own mistakes or our own misconduct. Just some of the things that we have done that we have put that separation between God and us. Now God is still there, but we moved. We moved. He is always present, but because of sin in our life, we he can't look at sin. He still looks at you, but he don't look at sin. So that is the separation that happens. Well, we see in Psalms 51, 1, it says that this is how when we realize that our conduct, that we are not lining up with the word, our conduct, our mouth, our thoughts, no matter what is misconduct that is not lining up with the word of God or not lining up the principles that God has for us or lining up for the purposes that he has for us. And I tell you, we all go through this. We all go through this and we have to understand that, you know, we've got to trust God completely. Well, Psalms 51 one says that we should be able to cry out like this, have mercy on me that we call God of all mercy. You know, God has mercy on us because we should receive, we should receive what we, that we deserve. But because of his mercy, because of his mercy, we don't have to receive it. Now, we might have to pay some consequences down the road, but he will give us mercy that we will not have to have eternal death and we have to understand it and it says go on here it says have mercy on me we need when we get into misconduct and we do something we need to get out and cry to God have mercy on me because according to your loving kindness and that is a God thing that is part of him he is loving he's kind to us according unto your Multitude, multitude of tender mercies blot out my transgression. That's, you know, that's where we have to understand this. That when, when we confess our sins and we ask God to forgive them, He blots them out. They're no more. He does not see them. Now, we still have to pay the consequences because we're still on the earth. You know, and how people will react to us and have some of the things that we have to do. But we have to understand this, that we need to cry out and say, Lord, you know, by your tender mercies, brow out my transgressions. But we have to understand that all the things are in the past. All the things in the past. What are they? In the past. So don't let Satan bring them up to you daily. And that's what happens too many times that he brings them up. You know, used to he'd do slide projectors and throw them across your mind. 
Well, then they got, you know, camcorders, and now he's got whatever he has, and they just did play those videos over and over and over mind of those sins. And that's when you say, my God in his loving mercy has blotted those out. I am set free from them. They will not rule over my life anymore. I am forgiven, and so I'm going to forgive myself also. Because when we do not forgive ourselves, we're saying our unforgiveness is more powerful than God's forgiveness. And so we have to understand this. So we go on and it says, then we need to pray out and we have to say, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Now we have to understand what iniquities is. Iniquities is those evil tendencies that we, that try to come and surface in us. It is like the temptations, the things in our lives that are just like if I take you and I, you hit your arm on the side of a table and it hurts. And a few days later, you see that bruise coming up. Yeah. And you say, where did that happen? Uh, and you don't remember, but you see that bruise. That is our propensity to sin. That is the thing that is in us from the old man, which we are created to be a new man. Yes, and he makes us a new man, but it's that old man that is trying to surface and that evil tendency that tries to go. go. But he said that he washed us, washed us from our evil old man tendencies. And so, you know, I hear people all the time, you know, they... Um, they say, well, I'm saved and everything, but I just gotta, I gotta smoke my weed because that covers me up. I just can't, I, you know, I just get so down and down. I have to smoke that. You know, I ha I've had guys that confess Jesus here and so forth. And I'm not knocking people on that particular sin, but they do a cover up and they try to have a band aid over a hurt or over a bruise or over a wound that when they, a true band-aid, not even a band-aid, a complete restoration is going to God and saying, release this from me. Right. Release this from me. Yeah. When you have that temptation or you have that thing that we have to understand, there's no temptation that's coming unto man that God does not give you escape to go out to it. And that escape is to turn it to Him and say, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you give me strength to endure. Amen. So we see that he says to cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me from that. Cleanse from this thing that every morning before I get up, it tries to attack me. Lord, protect me. That's the reason why we need to get up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. You're going to direct me. Instead of saying, good morning, Lord. You know, that's what too many people do. Oh, Lord, it's morning. And want to go out there and face the world. But the thing is, no, it's not. You should say, hey, Lord, it's morning. What do you have for me to do today? What do you, who are you going to put in my place? Amen. Is there a sin that's going to attack me? Let me be on the attack and I'm going to attack it. Yes. I'm going to get up today and I'm going to give the devil a black eye. Yes. Because he's trying to get me to do something that I know I'm not supposed to do. That even though my flesh is hungry and the flesh says, Feed me, feed me, feed me. But the thing is, we will say no and say, Lord, you give me the strength. You Amen. give me the strength. You know, sometimes we get into things and we're bruised and we're broken. And sometimes we get into this and sorrow gets us so much that we regret what we've done wrong. That we totally regret what we've done. How many of us made a mistake in our life? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. How many of us that those mistakes keep coming up to you? Wow. 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah. days. I'm, I'm just saying, because some of were younger than us, but some of us can say the 50. And they keep coming on to us, keep wow. coming on. Those visions keep coming on. Well, we have to understand that, first of all, in Isaiah 51, 3, it says, I acknowledge my transgressions. I have sinned ever before. The sin is ever before me. Mm. The sin is ever before me. Mm. 
Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This is the thing that people get so much in this. They get into this thing about guilt. And oh. guilt is not of God. Now people say, guilt is not of God. Conviction is of God. Oh. Guilt says there's condemnation. Mm. Guilt says there's no way out. Mm. Guilt says you are broken. You are never going to be put back together. Mm. And we see this that we have to understand. we got to let go of that past that said the past is past. Even though we were born in a sin nature and some of the curses that we came from fourth or fifth generations before. And if you don't understand this, I'll explain it out. I think I need to teach this again. But see, it's like this. That there are generational curses that are on people. And you say, wait, 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 wait a minute. There are. It's like this. If so, it is proven that is, if your family had alcoholism in there, you possibly might become an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You look at different things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad one generation of curse just, just, uh, was broke off my family. I've been reading about my family. There was a guy named Daniel Tucker Basham. Mm. Daniel Tucker Basham, he was in the Jesse James game. Mm. They said he was kind of an illiterate farmer, <laughs> but he was Jesse James' first cousin. Mm. Well, he's got put in 10 years if he would confess against Jesse James and they gave him a pardon because he confessed against him. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have to serve the 10 years. Well, I'm so glad that generational curse got brought, brought off of me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they, it has a tendency. Also, we have to understand that, that some of these curses that... Uh, you can study, and I find this so much, when somebody is a, a person that molests people, they've been molested too. Mm -hmm. Sins of the Father or so forth like this, and it goes on and on and on. So anyway, that is, those are the things, but we have to understand, we have to acknowledge sometimes, uh, uh, Sometimes that's the problem. Sometimes we not acknowledge that we have a problem. You know, God through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you stuff. Yes. You know, some of the problems we might not even think is, you know, that big a deal, but it's something that you know, something that we constantly are dealing with. You know, we constantly might totally get angry over certain things. And it's a lot of times we get angry over it because we we don't we have not forgiven the people that have made us angry or earlier in our life we learned to respond that way. Right. So we have to learn that, you know, we gotta acknowledge. We gotta acknowledge we have problems. You know, That's right. you know, I have I, I have problems. I, I'm the best looking preacher up here behind the pulpit. But anyway, right. here, I mean, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but you know, but you know, these type of things that we have to understand, we have to acknowledge when we constantly are getting angry or certain things keep bothering us and it doesn't bother somebody else, what's the root cause of that? Uh, we have to acknowledge yeah. that we do have problems. But we have to do also acknowledge that God, we go to Him first. Yes. And we, sometimes we have to say, Lord, reveal to me. That's the reason why they tell us we need to examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Why, why, why am I so perturbed? Why am I just lash out at people? 
Why do I do this? Why do I do that? We need to examine ourselves. We have to acknowledge that, you know, that we're not all that in a bag of chips. You know, we have to understand that. That we have, we live in a sinful world. There's a sinful nature out there that are trying to attack us. To ruin our testimony. So that's the reason why we need to give thanks to God. And we have to give all things to God. We need to give Him our health. We need to give Him our wealth. We need to give Him every problem. Everything. Everything. And we have to acknowledge, first we have to acknowledge that He is all powerful. There is, He's all knowing and He's always present and there's nothing too big that He cannot handle. So we've got to get out of this sorrow and regret. That we say, hey, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Well, I'm sorry you already did it. <laughs> you know, we got to get out of that. The only sorrowful we need to be is that if we haven't confessed it. Nah. Uh-huh. And if we haven't overcome it. Mm. Well, this goes on to the next thing. And I've said this over and over. Yeah, but we have to have a consciousness a total consciousness that God is real. That God loves us. That God cared for us. Cared for us. Because He gave His only begotten Son for you and me. Yeah. And we have to understand we have a have to have a conscious awareness of the presence of God. Amen. That He is here at all times. Amen. And when we don't Feel like he's here. You say, Lord, I'm here. Where are you? You know, we just have to be aware of his, that he's here. It says in 54, 51.4, it says, Against thee only have I sinned, done this evil in thy sight. Thou to be mightiest justified when thou speakest. Be clear when thou judgest. Cast me not away from that presence and take not that Holy Spirit from me. Mm. So we need to pray, Lord, mm. always let me feel your presence. Lord, always let your Holy Spirit guide me. Amen. You know, you hear people talk about grieving the Holy Spirit. Have you ever understand how you can grieve the Holy Spirit? This is the way you grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to guide you to all truth. The Holy Spirit is here to show you direction. The Holy Spirit is here to convict you. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you that you're supposed to confess and not do something, or confess and it tells you to do something, and you don't do something. That's grieving the Holy Spirit. Because He has sent by God to be our comfort and our direction, and so forth. And when you hear the Holy Spirit to tell you to do something or not to do something, and we do the opposite, we grieve the Holy Spirit. So, we go on, and we see That we look at the broken heart because of sin. We need to be quick to confess our sins. Quick when we do something wrong. Because if we don't do that, is we sin and we don't convict don't confess it, another sin comes on. That's right. It's almost like lying. Have you ever lied? And then what do you do? You tell tell another lie to cover up that lie. And then another lie to cover up that lie. Mm. But that's the way sin works. Mm. Sin works that, you know, well, I went out and done something because my flesh needed this and I needed this and I did that. And, you know, it felt good and my body needed it. I'm down and out and my mind, you know, my mind is so confused. Where does confusion come? Yeah. The enemy comes from Satan himself and says he is the author of confusion and the father of lies. 
And so we have to understand this, that we have to understand that we have to, when we sin, we need to stop. Just totally stop and confess it right then. That's where the conviction does. Amen. Satan will try to say, well, you're sin. You're, you're never going to get out of this. Mm. There's no way out. You might as well keep on sinning because God, he's never going to forgive you. Mm. You know, that's the reason why we have the confession. You know, it says, mm. one of the favorite verses is, is you know, First John one nineteen, F one nine, excuse me. First John one nine says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we need to pray that, and you know, be cleansed. You know, when you've done something, have you ever done something that you know was wrong, and after a while you just felt so dirty? Uh-huh. Yeah. But what does he want to do? Confess it? Get clean. Yes. Now, Get clean. And that's the reason why we need to be back to David here. It says in Psalms 51.10, which is one of the, my favorite verses in this old chapter, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Amen. Lord, cleanse me. Get all these faulty belief systems out of me. Yeah. Get all these things that I've said bad about myself and get all these things that I've heard other people say about me. Cleanse and give me a new heart. Yes, Lord. And Father, and give me, renew a right spirit in me. And what does renew mean? It means again. Yeah. Okay. I have a new spirit. Yeah. Again, okay. you get a new spirit. You, new spirit. We should wake up every morning and say, Lord, renew my spirit today. Make it new again. Don't let all the stuff in the past get me again. It's brand new today. It's just like it's a brand new morning. It's what we decide what we're going to do with that morning. We're going to get up and get in those same old gripe and complain. You know, are we going to say, hey, this is a fresh start. Let's go. Let's go for it. Well, I want to show this. When our hearts get healed, Healed from the past sins, even the forgiven sins, the sins that keep trying to get us. It makes us a new man. Mm. In Psalms 51, 12 and 13, it says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Mm. You know, we had somebody say, Dear Sunday, did joy come over her? Yes. She was set free, wasn't she? She was totally set free. And then it says, it says, Joyce and hope and uphold me with a free spirit. Mm-hmm. That you're no longer entangled with the world. Boy. Even though you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Yeah. Even though sin's going to try to creep in and try to, and doubt's going to come trying to tell you you're not saved. Well, first thing you got to do is doubt the doubts when it says that you're not a child of good God and you know you are. Mm-hmm. But then, this is the neat thing. Last verse. It says, 51.13 says, Then will I teach transgressors their way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. This opens the door that we will win many people to Christ. This opens the door that we will have. We will load the kingdom of God. To load the kingdom of God. That when we go and we confess and we get this and, and, and our broken hearts are healed because the sin that is in our past life, the sin that has been already forgiven and sin that keeps trying to attack us. We are no longer broken hearted because we have a new heart. He did a circumcision on our heart. He has done something that gets us motivated to bring other people because the joy of our salvation is our strength and it gives us the strength to go out and win others to people. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now. You see each one of our hearts. 
And Father, we know that you love us. Father, you have so much loving kindness for us and you have so much mercy for us. And Father, reveal to us any sin that is keeping us to live in that fulfilled life that you have for us. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you just come and that you will fill us and give us that joy. And Father, heal that heart. Heal that heart. Heal those regrets and all those sorrows. Father, heal that, that when our mind wanders and there's confusion. And Father, we say we bind that confusion in the name of Jesus. And when the devil comes to attack us and try to, try to fill our heads and cause all types of dilemmas in our life, that we will resist the devil. Yes. And he will flee from us. Yes. And Father, give us today to keep our hearts attuned to you. Yes. Father, that we make every day renewed. Yes. In Jesus' name, Thank you. amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Father.